Welcome back folks. Hope you're all enjoying the holidays. What we're going to look at today is this uh, Hantec USB scope. Now, this is a model 6074BC. It's got a rated bandwidth of 70 megahertz and we're going to check it out. It's four channels. It's got one gig of sample per second and uh, that would be in single channel mode not in four channel mode. And uh, we'll, do, we'll go through the, the user interface briefly and we'll have a, a look inside it hopefully and uh, let's get started on that. So one of the things I'll, I'll uh, note about it is that it's, it's very much unlike the other little scope that we did, the Instru Star scope that we looked at a little while back, um, which was a, a real piece of crap. In fact, I still have it here. But just to remind you, um, have a look at this. Okay, so we've got it roughly at, uh, I'll call that one volt peak to peak there. Let's see where we get up to 0.7 volts peak to peak. Let's just pop right up again to about, let's say three megahertz. Oh, look at the aliasing going on. That's, that's pretty bad. Okay, so that should be right about here somewhere, right? Look at this, look at the waveform. That's just horrible. All right, 0.83 volts there. That's uh, the four megahertz. 0.7 to three. There we are. Oh gosh, look at that waveform. That this is hilarious. So it really is more like a uh, four megahertz scope, not a twenty megahertz scope. We're we're here at six, but uh, you know it's it's the while the voltage level is okay, the waveform just just is just absolute crap. So we go back to four megahertz. I think it's the last place where it looked reasonable. Uh, I can't even call that reasonable. So let's take it up to 20 megahertz and uh, see what that kind of looks like. Give it a benefit of the doubt. Let's go over to here. So, uh, no, this is not a 20 megahertz oscilloscope with any stretch of the imagination whatsoever. Now, you should go back and watch that entire video. I'll put a link to it up here. I'll put a link to it down in the description and have a look at this thing. It, it, this thing should be avoided at all costs. But this, however, is uh, completely different. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's actually a pretty good scope. Now, this thing runs around about $200 or so. I think you can get it off AliExpress for slightly less than that from now and then. And I'm talking Canadian dollars here, so it's uh, maybe about 150 US. And unlike the other USB scope, this actually meets its specifications. In fact, in, in many respects, exceeds them quite handsomely. Okay, here we're back. We've got it plugged into the USB port on the computer. We've got a couple of signals coming in from a signal generator. I've got a sine wave and a square wave. And uh, the user interface should be up there. I'm not picking up anything right now. So let's just do a, the auto setup. Now what the auto setup on this one does is, it, is it, it defaults to triggering on channel 1. So it'll detect which channels have signals on them. And as you can see there, it's brought up the two different channels, the sine wave and the square wave I have going into it. But it always defaults to triggering off channel one. So if you're going to use this kind of uh, setup, uh, make sure that you have the trace that you want to trigger off coming into channel one. Now let's go through to some of the menu items here. Um, some of the uh, you know most popular ones are, are up here on these icons, but you can go into the menus and, and get more detail by going through here. Some of the more interesting things here would be um, math functions here. And so here we've got uh, channel one and channel two are the only two available channels right now. So we can turn it on and we're going to get A plus B here. And we can take that and change the level of it. So it kind of matches the other two in, in size. We can move things around here. So we just have to drag the trace icon here. Bring this up to here. Bring the math function down to here. I do whatever you like and we could do a minus b which is going to look pretty much similar a times b a divided by b and let's uh, enable that fast Fourier transform here and let me uh, change these values here so i can rearrange things on the screen a little bit better so right now the fast Fourier transform 
is looking at square wave. So that's what you might kind of expect. It's just for to get a, an idea. Like this is not kind of fast for your transform you get out of a thousand dollar oscilloscope. So, but it will give you an idea of the harmonic sequence here, just like you'd expect from a square wave. Go into it and see what we get if we look at the uh, second channel. Look at a sine wave. So we get the principal frequency and very little in the way of harmonics. This is a particularly good oscillator. You wouldn't expect a lot of harmonics in it. So you can uh, you so go over here. You can enable more channels. So we can enable channel three. Enable channel four. Four channels up on the screen. I don't have uh, stuff going into all four of them. Yeah, I want to set up and look at one of the main features of it. If we disable all the other channels, let's see what we can get as far as bandwidth is concerned. This is this is where this thing more than meets the specifications. Let's increase the frequency. Let's let's take this way up. We're at four kilohertz right now. Oh, I did, another thing I did want to show you while we're here was was the measure function. So you've got. You've got, uh, you can choose the source for the particular thing that you want to measure and then you can set it up. You've got vertical measurements, minimum, maximum, peak to peak, top, base, middle. It's quite a, an assortment here. So we can, let's, uh, let's add RMS in here. And let's also add in peak to peak. And for the fun of it, let's, uh, let's add in a horizontal one here. We've got period, frequency, rise time, fall time, so forth. Let's put frequency in there too. Okay, so this is not a hardware counter, but it, it's fairly accurate for a software counter. And so let's, uh, let's take this up in frequency here. And we can see that we're at one volt peak to peak. Spread that out a little bit more. Still got one volt peak to peak. Now it does need a full cycle on the screen in order to calculate the frequency. So here we are at 65 megahertz, 69, 70 kilohertz, sorry. And we keep going up. So let's now start going into the megahertz here. Let's get right up to 10 megahertz and we'll start from there. Again, let's uh, adjust our time base. Okay, we're still at, well, actually we've got a little bit more out of it now. So that's it. We're at 60 megahertz and we're at 870 millivolts. And I'll show you why. I'm not terminating this properly. I should be terminating this with a 50 ohm terminator because that'll make it certainly make a difference at uh, 60 megahertz. So let's see what that looks like. You can see there with proper termination on it um, and one volt peak to peak going into it, we're still at one volt here. Let's continue on now. We're going to go well beyond the 60 megahertz. Okay. So we've got it now at 70 megahertz and the level is at minus 18.5 dBm. So we're getting, yeah, volts peak to peak is 89.5 millivolts thereabouts. So that'll be our base point. So we're going to keep pushing up the frequency until it gets down to 0.7 times that, which is 63 millivolts. Bring it up to 80 megahertz. Bring it up to 90. So we can see we're well past 70 megahertz. So we're still maintaining the voltage that we had. Uh, and let's have a look. Let's bring it down to 10 megahertz. We see we're still at 86.6 millivolts. So, I mean, it, there's been no drop off. Let's go up, up to 100 megahertz. We're at 94. So it's actually going a little bit higher. And a, a lot of um, analog digital converters and scopes do that. They kind of push a little bit more as the frequency goes up. And that way they stay within the plus or minus 3 dB, but they get maximal bandwidth out of it by pushing up a little bit on the, on the high side. So let, let's take this way up here. Let's go up to 150 megahertz to see what happens. So we're definitely still within 3 dB. And um, the signal is just fine. It's, you know, it is a little bit jittery, but uh, it's still it's still doing the business. We're at 150 megahertz. This is more than twice the rated bandwidth of it. Yeah, let's bring it up 200 megahertz. Okay, now we're back down to where we were originally. So we're still basically within the 3 dB, and we're at 200 megahertz. So let's uh, let's take it up. Uh, 
maybe 20 megahertz at a time here. 77. Seventy-four. We're up at two hundred forty megahertz. It's still getting the frequency. It's still within three dB. Let's try the two fifty megahertz. We're getting closer now. So let's try two fifty-five. We're still good. Let's try two sixty. And that's it. Now we're 3 dB down. So you buy this 70 megahertz scope, um, and that's what you get. You get you get a four channel 70 megahertz oscilloscope, and I think it's actually a little bit better than that. But uh, you also get if you go to single channel, you get a 260 megahertz scope for 200 bucks. I mean, it's pretty amazing. Let now let's uh, enable another channel on it. Okay, things get a little bit wonky now. So how far do we back it off in order for things to come back again? Let's uh, drop down a little bit to uh, 180 megahertz. All right, so we're still we're still good at 180 megahertz. Let's bring it back to 150 megahertz, and I'd say that's probably what you get out of it, and get a really good two-channel oscilloscope at 150 megahertz. So let's see what happens when we uh, we enable a couple more channels. So let's let's enable them all. So here with four channels going, we're not getting the frequency in properly, and uh, although the amplitude looks about right, I think that might be an artifact. So let's back it off and see when that frequency comes back in for us. We'll do it at a hundred megahertz. Kind of, yeah. It's a little bit inaccurate there. Let's back it off to 70 where they specify it. For a $200 scope like this, something that has four channels and can run out on a single channel up to 260 megahertz. I think this is pretty good. I've had this scope for a long time. I bought it when I, I had a project where I needed a four channel scope and I needed it right away and I didn't have the money to buy a decent one. Uh, so I bought this and it served me well for many, many years afterwards. I'm, I'm really uh, happy with this scope. It comes with the, the scope itself, this cable here. It comes with two 70 megahertz rated probes and uh, two PNC to alligator clip cables. So if you really want to take advantage of this, you're going to need to get yourself some decent probes. So what I have for it right now, I got some Pico probes. That's these probes here. And uh, these, are, these are rated for 200 megahertz. I use them with it all the time. Uh, but if I want to do something a little bit more sophisticated, I just need the one channel. I want to get it out a little bit further. I have probes here that go up to 500 megahertz. So I'll just take them, put them on this. I'll, I'll do the compensation adjustment on them and use the probe for that particular purpose. But to take full advantage of this scope's uh, undocumented features, uh, you need to get yourself at least one and preferably two really good probes that kind of go well beyond that 260 megahertz that 200 megahertz where you get two channels and that'll give you a really nice setup very inexpensively okay folks i think i'm going to end uh, part one here and uh, we'll see you back in a couple of days on thursday for part two and we finish up our look at this little hand tech bye bye